Max, should the playoffs yep. impact LeBron's future with Cleveland? Absolutely yes. Mm -hmm. That is a separate question from did LeBron make his own bed and now he's lying in, <laughs> in it. Yes, the answer to that is also yes. If he chased Kyrie out of town, he brought this on himself. Nevertheless, if he's doing what's in his own best interest, which incidentally, that's what people do, right? Rational people act in their own best interest usually. If he's in it, if he's working right, in his own Abby. best interest, why would he, <laughs> dear Abby, or you know, you could say Adam Smith, why would he possibly stick around for a bad organization without strong leadership from the top on down? This is not Miami with Pat Riley and get everyone in line. This is not that. This is the LeBron James show. Now, if I were if I were Dan Gilbert, I would have also given LeBron whatever he wanted because in the absence of a Pat Riley figure in the organization, fine, LeBron, you know more than everyone else. You know, you get him in line. You be the guy. You make you decide who stays and who goes. You decide how we're going to play. And look, it's worked out very well for Cleveland so far. But from LeBron's point of view, Cleveland is not a desirable destination. Sorry, it's simply not compared to, uh, sorry if you live in Cleveland and you like it, you know, people, other people seem to like Miami better and Los Angeles better and New York better and other call them sexier locales. It's difficult for Cleveland to, to draw free agents, right? Even in this, even once they got LeBron, Kevin Love was a trade. Still, give, tell me a premium free agent who's ever signed in Cleveland. You know where I want to go? I want to live in Cleveland. Forget all the other big markets and all the other teams that are also good in more desirable locations, right? So how are they going to attract big-time talent, especially in the face of these Western Conference powerhouses, especially with the brain trust in, in not only Boston, but also Toronto, those teams continually get better. When you look in Philadelphia, generational talents at two positions. I mean, why would he stick around to lose and have the critics say, look at LeBron. Now he can't even get out of the East. Forget about chasing Jordan with all the rings. He'll never get there. He can't even get out of the East. Of course, the way his teammates play should have an impact on whether or not he stays. Well, let, let's, let me give you a couple of facts here. First of all, uh, it, when you look at the team itself, nobody's going to look at the team and say, oh, my goodness, the team without LeBron James is good enough to do X, Y, and Z. It's just that when you're the greatest player in the world, if you have supplementary parts around you that play their role and do their job, uh, then you have to look at that combined with the Eastern Conference and ask yourself about your chances. Uh, but I can tell you, if you're LeBron James, from a factual perspective, you got to look at what your options are right now. Uh, Houston, at the beginning of the season, Max Kellerman, I was told uh, that Houston could potentially be a possibility. Obviously, being here in Houston, I've spoken to a lot of folks over the last 24 hours. I can tell you this. Their priority is re-signing Chris Paul. Their priority is keeping the nucleus intact. Their priority is not gutting the team uh, just to get somebody like LeBron James. Everybody recognizes he's the best in the world, and he's certainly not a, a negative to any team in terms of his impact and his presence. But in the same breath, if you've got a gut the team and disrupt chemistry why do you need to do that if you're winning without him those are the kind of questions teams like the Houston Rockets at the particular moment that this particular moment in time are asking themselves so you look at Houston and then you say okay that's probably not going to happen you look at Los Angeles okay you go from Dan Gilbert to Magic Johnson that's a gimme but they're on the come up but in the same breath what are they going to be able to attract it remains to be seen so you got to ask yourself some questions about that but LA seems more and more plausible with each passing day because uh, it's believed that he's got a, a, at least a couple of 20 million plus uh, 20 plus million dollar homes here in Brentwood. And so you take that into consideration. All right. L.A. is an option. Then they bring up Philadelphia because of Ben Simmons and yep. Joel and B. I don't know anything about. I don't know anything uh, about this. All I can tell you is what I heard. What I heard is that uh, you have the lovely wife who obviously is going to have an incredible impact on what decision LeBron James makes along with his children. If you're going to depart from Cleveland, do you are you able to justify that by going up the road a few hours to Philadelphia? It's one thing to depart for the sunshine and the palm trees of Los Angeles, California, the purple and gold and playing for Magic Johnson. It's another thing entirely to leave just to go a few hours up the road in Philadelphia, which is just as cold and all of that other stuff, who already have two young stars in Embiid and Ben Simmons, and who, by the way, if LeBron and the Cleveland Cavaliers get knocked off this year, I believe will find 
themselves in the NBA Finals. And so when you look at it from that perspective, yeah, they could obviously, they would love to have LeBron and what have you, but okay. the justification for LeBron to go there would be jumping on that particular bandwagon, which yeah, I think comes with, with loads that. of negative publicity. No, no, Stephen I'm saying a. it comes lo loaded. Hold on. It comes loaded with negative publicity, whereas going to He's L.A. doesn't necessarily do that.